Okay. I'm there we go. Hi, everybody on YouTube. Apologies yeah. for the delay. Yep. There they are. <laughs> We've got some of us here. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, it's streaming. Okay. And so I'm going to talk cats away quick. So welcome everybody. Uh, Kaisa, can you set to speaker view maybe as well, if you haven't? And I'm gonna turn on some lights here. So this is a first effort um, and maybe it's a one of a kind and maybe it's more than that. Yesterday we had the reading of the feeding of the 5,000 and particularly as in that reading, uh, we had the exact language that of what Jesus did with that bread that he also does in communion. Uh, and having that compound with some questions from some of you about when do we get communion again and being part of larger church conversations about that. And also just uh, as we watch the pandemic continue to stretch on and really wanting to find ways for uh, you to be connected to each other and for you to receive uh, goodness from God. This just seemed like a good moment, uh, at least to do this once. And if it seems good, uh, maybe we could get tech to go smoother in upcoming times and do it as a brief check-in uh, in this way or some other just kind of more casual and short way. I thought to do a little bit of opening reflection the other day as we were talking about it in mutual ministry Larry was Larry Henning was saying that uh, when he would bring communion to shut-ins there was often some sort of uh, word portion just like if we were together in worship there would be uh, some bible readings and a sermon before we moved to the meal and so he would often have some conversation and uh, and that was sort of a word per portion before he would share communion with people uh, who were shut in. And since we're all somewhat shut in right now, uh, it seems like a little bit of that reflection and just moment to be together rather than saying some words and having a bite and then shutting off made sense. And something that grabbed me uh, was a little bit of um, a Bible study on a week ago's Romans reading from Romans 8 that was in the Christian century, and I happened to read it the other day. Uh, some of this says, uh, talking about how we use Bible passages, and it says, application seems so limited. Embodiment is a more holistic and full body experience of scriptural encounter. As a preacher, I do not want people to apply the sermon to their lives. I want the sermon to become a part of our living and so that was making me also think about when I was on my internship, I have been thinking uh, a lot about my internship these days because of intern Lisa in part. Uh, and I remember when I was hearing from my intern committee, there were some voices on there that said, well, we'd like in your sermons if you gave us something to do during the week. And I wasn't very sure about that as an intern. And I think I've gotten less sure about it as it goes on because that feels like the application sort of thing. And it's sort of like a, oh, if I do this, then I can check it off. And then I don't have to really uh, engage faith anymore. It's just this little thing of uh, the small of what I do rather than the big of who I am or who we are. And so then that even more makes me think about communion and this uh, moment together that it isn't uh, just a ritual. It's not a little application sort of thing. It's much more about uh, becoming who we are. This is Jesus becoming who we are and us together becoming uh, part of Jesus. And so that's my normal explanation of sacrament, uh, particularly when I get ready to do baptisms, like the family I did the baptism for back in June, whose wedding I had done a decade ago. Uh, I often explain well, so I could go up on the roof of the church building and I could shout over the neighborhood, hey, God loves you. And it would be true. And people would just think there's some nut yelling on the top of the church building. And I could, uh, on a Sunday morning, stand at a pulpit and say over a congregation or now uh, across 
a live stream, hey, God loves you. And it's the same message and it would still be true. And uh, some people might still think, oh, there's a nut who's just saying this. And some people might say, well, it sure doesn't feel very much like God loves me this week. Or uh, might say, he can't say that to me because he doesn't know what I've done this week. And so God couldn't possibly love somebody like me. But then we get to the sacraments, we get to baptism and communion. And that's the direct application of the promise, which isn't only the application because it hits our bodies. It's a splash on our heads in baptism. It's something we take into our mouths and ingest in communion as this uh, promise then becomes part of us. Hey, God loves you. You are a beloved child of God. And that promise isn't just something that floats out there uh, that you can take or leave. It's, it's now with you and it's directly part of you. And so that just feels to me like, um, like a really important embodiment for us, especially in these days. And with that notion of, uh, of the promise of God's love, uh, I'd also been thinking about it now as it's been two weeks and two months since we had communion together that uh, my worship professor, who was also a really important advisor and advocate for me, uh, Mons Teg, a man who died just over a year ago, uh, I remember his explanation as we were talking about communion and some people would say, uh, well, we should only do it a few times a year to keep it special, otherwise it becomes too normal uh, that... Uh, Dr. Teg said, well, if this is God's way of saying, I love you, do you ever say, I love you too much? That you have somebody say, no, I want you to say it less often, so it's more special. Uh, and so just for some of that in these days, uh, thinking it's been a long time since in this way, God got to say, I love you. And you got very clearly to have that promise of, uh, of God's love and Jesus' life with you. Uh, and that Jesus who suffered and who rose, uh, it, it seemed like besides it coming to your ears in a word that it would be a good moment now to get to ingest it, have it be part of our bodies and together to be part of the body of Christ. And so uh, if you've got your communion elements ready, let's turn to those now. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his followers, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so uh, if you're with somebody, you can serve each other. If you're by yourself, you can serve yourself. Uh, but if you'd like, you could also, for those of you on Zoom, unmute and offer the body of Christ given for you. Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Did you unmute us? Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, giving thanks. He offered it to his followers, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. Of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Better not try to drink it. Blood of Christ shed for me. Let's pray. God of love and life, we thank you for the specialness of this moment. We have great confidence and delight that your love and your life is not limited, not limited to this meal, not limited to a special promise, not limited to a few of us, but spreads throughout this world, through all times and places, is bigger than our whole universe. But in these days, we also know that we need a special assurance of it. That when we are when we feel isolated, when life seems so vulnerable, we need your promise. We need your gifts with us. So we thank you for your presence with us in this meal. 
for a special assurance and for the connection to each other and the connection to you. This that is not only an application for these days, but that comes to take on flesh in us as an embodiment of your love for us and for the world. So thank you for your presence in this meal, Jesus. Thank you for your presence in us. With this, we commend our very selves into your care this evening and eternally, even as we pray the words you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done heaven. on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, if this does seem helpful or something of this variety, uh, let me know and we can figure out ways to do it uh, regularly, whether that's weekly, bi-weekly, once a month, or whatever might be good for you. Uh, so be in touch if you like. And uh, let's end with a sharing of the peace. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And also with you. Also with you. And, and with you all. Hello, also. Help, Kaisa. Happy birthday, Beth. Thank you. Happy birthday, Beth. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs>